it's it's okay to cry sometimes. Yeah, a woman, you know, cry. probably would uh, be better off if you were able to allow yourself to feel. Well, I do want to watch the trans versus conservative men. Is masculinity disappearing it's in America? Together. You say we're just redefining what being a man is. You have to understand you're redefining. Like, let's be real. Me watching this is different than any other content creator on this platform watching this. You know what I mean? I'm not like just reacting as a react meta guy. This is right in my fucking wheelhouse. Trans versus conservative men. Is masculinity disappearing in a America? A fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. And it's been I'm led by men have, like, like throughout all of history years. and look where it's gone. By the way, no, I love the new attitude that Thank Jubilee you. has where they literally will, will hit people against one another that aren't even like diametrically opposed to each other. You know what I mean? This notion that like a trans man can't be conservative is, is funny. It's kind of like the sex uh, incels versus porn stars or some shit. Or not Ooh. incels versus porn stars. What was it like virgins versus porn stars? Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Masculinity is disappearing in America. I think that masculinity is disappearing. I think that it's a concerted effort to emasculate. Every fucking, oh my God, his name is Brandon. Well, Let's go, Brandon. Uh, literally, that Any that tips? is a conservative uh, influencer. Like, this dude is not like an organic, homegrown conservative. Isn't he an influencer? Late men, um, I think that some people feel threatened by masculinity and, and the, uh, the typical way that men carry themselves. So I think that there's an effort to mitigate uh, strong men in America. There's a few different ways to think about masculinity, but just looking at kind of the definition of the term 50 years ago, you had you know, people Let's like John. Bro, how are you gonna talk about masculinity while wearing glasses, bitch? You can't even see without it, dude. A real masculine, manly man would say, fuck seeing. I don't give a fuck. And you had, I just you know, feel, king, bitch. You had, Sean Connery, you know, you think of like Sean masculine Connery. features. As yeah, masculinity is when you beat your wife, dude. What the fuck is masculine by Sean Connery? You know what I mean? Like what? What is just a gigantic the Hollywood dork? Oh, oh, you mean the fucking, uh, the characters that he portrayed? That's what masculine, that's what masculinity is to you? You fucking idiot. It's James Bond is a fictional character. It's not real. That's not a real human being. <laughs> Beards, hairy chest, big muscles, being stoic, being brave, being rugged being a provider today you have you know people like harry styles and, and timothy chalamet you have people that are completely contrary to what we were looking at back then and those values and of those masculine characteristics are, are completely devalued i do believe that masculinity is going downhill Stop so yes okay bro i'm just saying i wouldn't be talking about testosterone levels going down if i look and sound like why why are you saying that i don't want to say anything they're gonna gonna come out that like he's actually a trans man or something and then i'm gonna be fucking canceled but like oh my god his name is gilbert okay never mind he he's allowed that's a gilbert dude that's some gilbert ass shit you know literally toxic masculinity right now yes i'm engaging in toxic masculinity by belittling this person do you want to know why because i don't believe in the fucking masculinity boundaries that that other people specifically conservatives set it's especially funny if you are the type of person who doesn't even fit the same fucking masculine boundaries that you rigidly want to hold on to, especially when someone like myself, who would normally fit in those traditional masculine boundaries, don't give a fuck about it. So I'm making fun of someone who doesn't, who does give a fuck about it. Okay. And if you can't comprehend that, I don't know what else to tell you. Those aren't my standards. Thank you, Mesmerax. You get it. Hassan is using that guy's own standards against them. They aren't actually Hassan standards. Exactly. Hi, I'm Gilbert, I'm 24 years old, and I'm a conservative man. With my beliefs and having a trans man as my friend, we don't really talk about politics. Someone being trans doesn't make me like them any less of a person. As far as pronouns- Murad is more mask than you. 100% Murad is more masculine than me. It's true as fuck. Um, when referring to my friend, I don't really use the pronouns that my friend would want. I just say my friend or I say their name. Uh, just because I feel like I'm giving into the narrative that men can be women and women can be men if I use the pronouns that they want. I do see that. It's kind of sad. You are what he wants to be, and then you tell him, haha, you small. Yeah, because the, the rigid world that he is creating for himself, unironically, is the reason why he's hurt, is the reason why he's sad. He doesn't need to live in that world. He could just not be a fucking conservative. You know what I mean? 
masculinity is under attack completely. But my definition of masculinity, like you said, has a lot to do with the traits that are associated with it. As a gay man, I, I mean, of all of us, you know, I mean, I'm not the most masculine man, but I do think that the good aspects hey, of wait, masculinity trust. are definitely under attack, but I don't think- show, show what you're wearing right now. This is the masculine, this is your masculine beacon, guys, huh? This is your masculine hero. Look at what this, he's wearing pink, dude. Ew. Imagine. Real men wear pink. Imagine fucking, you know, claiming you're masculine and then wearing pink t-shirt. Ew, couldn't be me. It depends on how you look at it. it. Because a lot of the traits can also be embodied in women and in femininity. So when we look at masculinity, I think that, that we have to also look at what is the actual definition of femininity and masculinity? And if we're, if we're defining masculinity by being stoic or muscles or body parts, then um, is it really masculinity? A lot of times when you guys spoke about masculinity, you associate it with men being manly, but I think more women are embracing their masculinity. Masculinity is still there. Sure, yeah, I mean, yeah. just other genders are using it. Being courageous, being powerful, more women are standing in their power, which is again associated with masculine, but it's not specific to just men. Women are no longer submissive, they're dominant. Women don't need men, and I think that most- Okay, every, every dude's penis just shriveled on the right side. You can't be saying stuff like that. <laughs> To conservative men. Why is being powerful associated with masculinity? I feel like um, I think he's just I think he's that. just saying that like that's how it's perceived, but masculinity is independent of of men and like women have these traits as well if those are the boundaries that we're setting for masculinity. It kind of feels like you're going in the wrong direction. Most of America is realizing that anyone can be powerful on their own. I believe that the masculine traits are inherently in men and men have to take a position you made right. a really good it's point by saying women are man. now yeah no they they are i mean he's a he's a conservative pundit let's go brandon becoming more masculine they feel as if they don't need men which i think is the problem here um i think that the way we've been designed by god in my opinion is that men are to lead men are to be strong men are to be brave men have to Wait, take men are what? To be brainwashed by yeah by rhetoric by God. Yeah, totally, dude. Men are destined to lead. I mean, statistically speaking, more men follow than lead, okay? That's just that's just how it is. There's an overwhelming Black majority of men out there that are not doing what God destined them to do, I guess, okay? Take their rightful position. The way our country has been um, structured to this point have been because of strong men who have taken a stand, who have fought wars. Now I feel like it's getting so lopsided that our families are degrading People don't know where they're at in this country. Now in 2022, masculinity like is being redefined. Is and I think what happens is, is people... Confusing man as in like human or mankind with men. As in, yeah, we, we cut shit, we mil we make things that we, we know, we conquer. Yeah. People get upset when things start to change. No, I think that nobody ever wants to take that away from men. I think that what we want to do it's in the world now is start to understand. Yeah, it's what a is weird dichotomy. It's a weird way that they've uh, brought this together. They're pinning uh, conservative men against trans men. Oh my God, dude. 1921 Tulsa massacre was a big lie. I can't say anything else, okay? This is literally like the adult version of like asking all of the... the white people around you that like they can say the n-word like please i will let you i love it actually the conservative political commentator version of that insane there's no way dude there's no fucking way he actually 100 i have to look this up wait i want to i want to see but i'm worried that like there's gonna be dumb shit in here perspective i did a little bit of research reading about the facts and circumstances surrounding the tulsa uh massacre that it is today it was a race riot uh, before I don't know 19 uh, 2018 oh my god uh, no he oh no 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 he's just straight up doing white supremacist commentary like saying Tulsa was not a, a, a massacre but instead of race riot is literally white supremacist bullshit so when they say race riot could it just be white people rioting no he's not talking about that no the only people that say it's a race riot say it I upped his fucking audio I upped his audio, Murat, please talk directly into the microphone or else I'm going to fucking lose my mind, okay? Can you hear me now? Race riot is literally started when white people kill black people and they defend themselves. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's crazy. And it's always been really associated with this very machismo space. And now there's different kinds of men in the world. There's not just biological men. There's also trans men or people who, def who want to be masculine. So the, I think what's happening now is people are pushing against change because mm -hmm. change is scary and people don't understand. And so 
So I think men, biological men, feel under attack when I think that's not what's happening here. The point that you made is 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 100% correct. There they see themselves as an exception until they're not. The funniest part of that is that like black conservatives love to talk about how they're different and then they literally are exactly the same. Black people are not a monolith, but holy fucking shit, dude. Black conservatives certainly are. There, it's just, it's wild to just act in such a weird uh, desperation to see uh, yourself or act like you are very different than everyone else, which every black person is different. But every single black conservative I've ever seen ends up denying atrocities against black people. It's just a role you have to play. Our different phases and people are experiencing in different ways. The feminist movement is... I think they are attacking masculinity within men. What they're doing is attacking men, and that's what's causing the problem. What part of the feminist group feels like it's attacking? Because I know that most feminism is like wanting equal pay or... Well, you just said that women not needing men is somehow empowering. You know, having a man is somehow less empowering or being an individual is somehow less But that's how women feel. Right? Women actually are saying that because that's how they feel. It's but as that's if... not how every woman feels. But that, no one's saying every woman. Just saying no, women, women, women speak for the themselves. Women? So right. that, you, all of you are going to have different opinions as biological men. Absolutely. Women all have different opinions. Oh, you see a very specific group of women no, saying this. Let me just... You just, you did just say that's how women feel. So are you speaking on behalf of all no, women? No, no, I, no, I'm not. Let me take that back. So, the women who are saying that feel that way. Why do you feel that women in general feel disempowered? People misunderstand you and think run-of-the-mill black conservatives exist versus black conservative pundits. No, I mean, run-of-the-mill black conservatives are not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about black uh, conservatives that, you know, are, are paid to be black conservatives. It's not an accident that you uh, always are, are relegated to that same position as a black political commentator who happens to be Republican. It's just so strange. If you took what Candace Owens was saying and, and you closed your eyes and you had no idea Candace Owens was a black woman, you'd be like, this is the most racist white supremacist woman in America. It's just straight up. And that's not an accident. Like, white conservatives can't get away with saying shit like that. They want to, but they can't. Do no, I don't think in general. No, no, no. That's a generalized statement. I can't, you can't say that. I said well, the, the women. One, no, I did not. I said the women who say that. You associated somehow women are now embracing masculinity, right. which means that they are now more empowered because they don't need, they don't a, man need a man. Or right. women, women, men feel empowered when women need but a man. But I don't think that women's empowerment comes from having a man or not having a man. So why is it always associated that... Uh, you know, a woman's now empowered because she doesn't need a man. A, a woman has always been empowered. Women have never been, but they've never felt that. That's not true. Historically, yeah, women famously were always empowered. I mean, always. They they had the right to vote. They just chose not to uh, use it because they were yeah. so empowered. Yeah, I hate the workplace. Please do not allow me to you know make my own money. Yeah, you know, just yeah, I I love seventy whatever cents on the dollar. It's just. So, I mean, if we true. go back to the 1920s, if you're going to do that, but that's not what but we're of course, talking about. We're talking about society right now. Right now, you actually think women are empowered right now? Absolutely, women are empowered. Right? Wow. Women are empowered. Wow. Who's the vice president? The vice president. And how long did it take for her to become a vice president? Oh my God. This is liberalism, okay? Liberalist brain rot is like, oh, well, the vice president is a woman. Okay, black people are empowered then too, I guess, because Barack Obama was the president, you know? Gay misogyny hits different. I, I love it. I think it's pretty funny. That guy's gay because he just hates women. <laughs> You're gay because you want to fuck dudes. He's gay because he hates women. Five months. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. There is a right and wrong way to be a man. Yeah, that's funny. That, that, hold on. This is the best part. They swear feminine men never existed in the 20s. Motherfuckers were wearing powder on their faces and big ass wigs and dresses. Okay. <laughs> And those were like the dudes running society. Talk about how, how masculine people used to be. That in and of itself reveals the truth about masculinity being a completely subjective concept. Like, yeah, wow, that's masculinity, brother. I think that when I originally heard the question being asked, I didn't agree with it. Uh oh, but what's the gay conservative about to say about fucking the right and wrong way to be a man? Men are not abusive individuals. Men are to lead their families. And men who do not display that, I don't believe that they are men. <laughs> Homie gonna say, it's okay to be a top, but a sin to be bottom? I don't think he's gonna say that. <laughs> my opinion. And all of the qualities that I see in my father is what I believe a man should be. All of those characteristics are what make a man. And when I see a man be a coward in the truth, in, in, in just speaking the truth, or um, sticking up for what's right, those are not men. I gotta My name is Clarkson. I'm 24 years old and I'm a conservative man. My biggest question for the other side 
really is, are you happy? Anybody that wants to fundamentally change society and change gender roles, to me, that, that's not happiness. And if, if we want to fight for acceptance, we need to start with acceptance, which is accepting society for what it is. All right, you guys are getting a Marat pause. I, I don't love this accepting society for what it is business. Um, history is full of a lot of really terrible things. It's I. It's not great to just like draw a line in the sand and that says, oh, all those guys, uh, other guys were fucked up. Me, not me, right? There's definitely our perception of what's right and what's wrong is changing over time. You just kind of have to acknowledge it and try to be better than the guy before you. Like that's that's all it takes. At the end of the day, we're all men, and I don't believe there's any any wrong way to be a man. We're just redefining what it means to be a man. But there are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining dude. what it is to be a man. Wait. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking Wait, about. Wait, he said, who kept the human race going? Patriarchy is so wild. Like we literally just completely act like, I mean, we're also two white dudes just like talking about this. <laughs> I know, but it's just like we, but like you just literally think like we did this shit. You know what I mean? Women had no role in this. Okay. It was the men that advanced society and actually insane fucking take. Even if women were not, uh, were, were forcibly subjugated, not allowed in many circumstances, unless you were like literally, you know, the, the, uh, uh, a historic but so, even but outside of those historical exceptions influence and being in power are two different things yes yes influence allows you to have power but that's not necessarily no but even the if same thing. but even if there's women a, there's had a, there's a man gatekeeper that is giving you the opportunity to utilize that influence and turn it into power even if you think that like women were not in a fucking position of power the idea that like society was built exclusively by men is psychotic um because even if you're not an empress or so or just, someone with influence even if you were gay kept you still played a significant role regardless so let's just imagine for a second that he is right and that men did build society that's not to say that women can't or they wouldn't have done well, a that better too. job yeah, right you're right maybe they did build society but they just did a shitty job at it women could have you know gotten here us in half the time you don't know that yeah i agree idea that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining what it is to be a man. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking about. But, but why do you there think is... it has to stay the same? Yeah. Why do we need to have the same thing for hundreds and hundreds of years? Do you not see the state of- It's not the of... same thing. It's just, just it's said. keeping the same qualities. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. It's, no. And it's been led by men like throughout all of history and look where it's gone. So. Oh, you know, we're talking about redesigning what it means to be a man. So what do you want to bring to traditional men? I think it's embracing that you can be vulnerable. I think that a lot of men want to portray strength, strength, strength. But men are people, and I know that men have feelings. Being a man and masculinity, those are two different things. And I believe that we can okay, redefine go whatever that means to anybody by including other types of men or other types of masculinity. I myself am a father, I have a child. Some people would disagree with me being a father because I am transgender. But that being said, I present to the world as male, my child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of your family and cry. It's okay to suffer silence as well. Strong men, I believe, exude the qualities that you guys like the conservative twink. You're not remotely masculine, but you're still a man. Yeah, that's like a weird thing to 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 be in that situation. Like, you can still be like a masculine twink, but he's not even like a masculine uh, uh, twink. You know what I mean? Makes it makes it extra strange that on the side of like you know masculinity is like being destroyed. Those dudes in your fucking circle, in your immediate circle unironically believe that your existence is a uh, mark against the the masculinity uh, dying like those dudes literally think masculinity is dying because there's homosexuality running rampant throughout society i mean it's the same energy as like having a a, a, a black conservative there too because like this this is a very diverse group of conservatives but like most the larger group of conservatives would also think like black people should not have as many rights <laughs> But that being said, I present to the world as male. My child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of your family and cry. It's okay to suffer silence as well. Strong men, I believe, exude the qualities that you guys are referring to. I think the problem is overcorrection, right? Some people believe that men need to cry and lay on the ground and be feminine like women. My name what? is Brandon. Okay, first of all, it's incre what he's suggesting is incredibly unhealthy. 
Must never lay on the ground and cry like women. <laughs> women are always fucking crying, dude. Ew. <laughs> They're always laying around on the ground and crying. It's it's okay to cry sometimes. Yeah, a woman you know, cry. probably would uh, be better off. If you were able to allow yourself to feel rather than maintain this facade of this big masculine macho man that you are that fucking suffers in silence. Brandon, I'm 34 years old and I'm a conservative man. I had a lot of curiosities about what it's like to be a person who believes that they're a trans man. You know, I feel like God has created all of us very uniquely. And although I have beliefs and I follow the Bible to the T, I still want to know from other people of what their experiences are. It doesn't mean I have to agree, but I really want to know what other people are feeling from the person who's experiencing it real time. I have When's the last privilege. time I cried? I have no idea. Oh, sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived both lives and I can tell you firsthand that it does exist. I am taken much more seriously in my career since I've transitioned as a man. Prior to transitioning, I would work just as hard if not harder for the same position and not be considered. The minute that I transition, I am immediately taken more seriously. I can give you an example. Obviously with COVID, there's like the mask mandate, right? So I have to tell customers all the time, it needs to be above your nose, right? I do that all day. My manager who's above me, who is a woman, will have to go to them, tell them they give her a fight. But the minute I just look in their direction, it's up. It doesn't seem like a privilege, but it is because now my manager has to work three times harder for something that's so simple. I think the word privilege is the thing that turns a lot of people off with right. this conversation. But that being said, again, myself living my life as a female, pretty much half my life, and then now half my life as a man. There is no way I could not be honest about the fact that my life has changed drastically. Also being a white man, that's also a conversation a lot of people don't want to have. But I have privilege of being white and privilege also of being a man now. I can walk into any room and command that room in a heartbeat because people just do that with men. And I think the I thing is that biological men are born say, into that space, the so they'll never the ever see it. it. Why do we now, I as women who have become men, to get to have this thing? It's 100% because we are men. We look like men. Nobody would ever know. No one would ever know that no. we used to be women. So, so it's actually a real lived experience. So, I agree with a lot of what you... Buck, Buck has such a... He is such a fucking old head uh, trans man. It, it literally is like he's saying things from the point of view that is like outdated. And also uh, he's saying things that are that are appealing to the unfortunate reality is that like his approach to uh, being trans definitely like trans medicalist. And like he keeps saying stuff like I was a woman <laughs> and now I'm not, you know, that's like unless he's updated his views, but like. The Blair White approach? I mean, I don't know if he's as bad as Blair White. Let's be real. Blair White is like a straight conservative. You know what I mean? A lot of you, uh, a, a lot of you baby trans didn't fucking grow up, grow up in a world that, that he grew up in. Okay. That's just the reality. And, and I don't need to tell you this. I'm a cis person, but you know that already. That's why like in the UK and shit, like for example, older trans people in, in uh, the UK straight up prefer the term transvestite. Or transsexual, not transvestite, sorry, transsexual and transvestite too. There's a lot of uh, uh, differences in culture with like older, the older trans generation, uh, the, the trans elders, then stop saying yikes chat, he's right. Yeah, I don't understand why like 18 year old uh, uh, they thems in the chat are like yelling at me about some shit that they might not have fucking learned about yet about their own uh, culture. What the fuck? What, what do you mean, yikes? A lot of younger trans people uh, offer a lot of uh, leeway to older trans people because, you know, they've been through a lot. It's the, the shared pain and the shared struggle that they completely understand. So they make, uh, they make, they give them leeway, even if uh, older trans people sometimes will become mouthpieces for transphobic cis uh, pieces of shit. I don't, I don't think that, I don't think Buck's entire worldview is as like, distorted and and, and like he still reps being trans and has for a very long time and has done that throughout most of his experience in a way that like candace owens has never repped being black or black issues you know what i mean which is why i'm not i'm not saying uh, he's as bad but he does have a lot of uh, uh bad qualities for sure to all are saying as far as like transitioning um but as a black man, 
privilege looks way different for me because if I'm walking down the street, then I'm seen as a threat by police, by women, by anybody else. Being seen as a man is where my privilege stops and where everything else begins. So I don't see it as privilege. Okay, I, I got a lot to say about this topic <laughs> here. First of all, I mean, we have to be transparent and honest with each other. You know, I think that not everybody on this side presents 100% like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. You know, men have it really hard in this world and they've always had it hard in this world. The wars have been fought by men. They've died in the hundreds of thousands. Men commit suicide more. Men work more to dangerous jobs. You know, if somebody broke in this place right now, who are they gonna expect to defend everybody in here? It's gonna be the men. If your family fails, they're not looking at your wife. They're not, they're looking at the man. You know, I just want people to understand it. There's, 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 there's some advantages that men have and then also- I think Candace Owens red being black when she used to have that anti-Trump site. I mean, she literally was a victim to hate crime and, and one a, a successfully sued her, uh, her county's like board of education uh, for being victim to an anti-black uh, hate crime when she was in high school. I just, I don't, I don't uh, consider her to be like someone who genuinely or legitimately ever repped black causes. She just reps Candace Owens above all else. You know what I mean? On this side presents 100% like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. You know, men have it really hard. Wait, what? If I have you on the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man? Wait. In this world. Wait, what do you mean? This topic here. <laughs> First of all, I mean, we have to be transparent and honest with each other. You know, I think that not everybody on this side presents 100% like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. That's bullshit. That's straight bullshit. Yo, that's, first of all, that's fucked up to say, but it's also not even real. That is so bullshit. Passing is not, passing is not the, the end all be all of like being trans, obviously. But like, are you out of your mind, dude? Those motherfuckers pass, try to point to any of those trans dudes in, in, in a crowded room and be like that woman over there. And see if anyone understands what the fuck you're saying, okay? That's so ridiculous, dude. The irony, of course, is like, if he doesn't pass, if any of them don't pass in your mind, then neither does Ben Shapiro. Then neither do most men. Because guess what? Gender is not fucking binary in the way that people try to explain it away. It's just not. There are dudes out there who can't grow fucking facial hair. There are dudes out there who can't, uh, who, who are not super tall, like, but they're still dudes. It, it has nothing. It doesn't take away from them being dudes. Yeah, Gilbert is sitting right there, Brandon. <laughs> I can't believe you're about to say that. You know, men have it really hard in this world and they've always had it hard in this world. The wars have been fought by men. They've died in the hundreds of thousands. Men commit suicide more. Men work more to dangerous jobs. You know, if somebody broke in this- He would just agree with you that Benjamin doesn't pass as a man though? No shot. He would never agree with that. Are you kidding me? Place right now, who are they gonna expect to defend everybody in here is gonna be the men. If your family fails, they're not looking at your wife. They're not, they're looking at the man. You know, I just want people to understand it. There's, 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 there's some advantages that men have and then also men do struggle and cuss. But that doesn't change the reality of male privilege. Like women have those uh, disadvantages as well. It's so fucking strange. People just don't understand privilege. I've, I've realized like we all have it. Okay. We all have it in some way uh, over others. Okay. There is one guy on the planet right now that is the least privileged person on the planet. Okay. They're like a second away from dying. And, and that always changes. That person dies. And then there's someone else that is, you know, just as uh, not privileged as, as the other person. Okay. But for some fucking weird reason, we just never, we can't comprehend that privilege is not about privilege. It doesn't automatically mean you're just fucking balling dude okay it's something that conservatives regularly talk about with like black people for example like white privilege white privilege white privilege like well there's poor white people it's like of course there are poor white people like what do you mean privilege just means that there aren't extra compounding factors that you have to deal with because there's no historical way of like harming you by virtue of the color of your skin and we're talking about white privilege same with male privilege it doesn't mean that you're still not getting fucked over. It doesn't mean that like men don't get abused by the fucking capitalist order of society. You know what I mean? Like, of course, of course, men get fucked over, of course, but not on the virtue that they're men, unless we're talking about divorce court, in which case, yes, you are a victim of divorce court. You know what I mean? <laughs>
Custody <laughs> and all kinds of different things. Oh, no, 100%. Things in I 100% I agree with you as a man now, right? But I think my perception of it is different than yours because you were born male. Sorry. One of, the, one of the best parts about this, of course, about conservatives regularly fucking talking about how much men suffer is that the way that they analyze men's suffering is unironically a distraction away from actually alleviating that suffering. It's like, dude, literally get out of the way then, okay? You can't fucking talk about like, oh, well, men are men are victimized. And then you turn around and you're like, okay, you're right, actually. And we should do something about it. And he's like, no, actually, but men are victimized. So I should be fucking mean to women. Why are you allowing, why are you recognizing that there's a problem and then literally continuing to cause subjugation to others and to extend that suffering instead of trying to solve it? you were raised male you have a whole other space in that and i totally respect your opinion on that and i believe that that is a true lived experience as a born man yeah and let me add with the black man because yeah. we have a different a total different reality in that i don't in, in no way form or fashion do i go into a room and i feel like i'm less than i think i command presence when i go into a room because the way i'm dressed and i'm tall i go in the streets i've never had a person cross the street i've never been attacked by a police officer i was a police officer you know i've been pulled over probably three times in, in my entire life i mean my biggest question with this and why i don't necessarily agree with it is because when it comes to privilege dude you're literally a cop yeah no shit, dude that's crazy it's it's so funny dude conservatives are so ridiculous that's why like it takes someone to be like hate crimed for uh for for or, like a loved one to be hate crime for that person to like literally be like okay maybe i was wrong like dick cheney homophobic anti-lgbt daughter comes out as a lesbian he's like all right maybe maybe we're we're only you know btq phobic now the l part is fine it's wild he's like oh yeah well you know fucking racism in the criminal justice system doesn't exist because I'm a cop and I've only been uh, pulled over three times. So motherfucker, you're a cop. What the fuck? There's not really a way to quantify it. It's very subjective. Um, so like your version of male privilege and your version of male privilege are very different. So it's it's hard to see the other side because you've never lived yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, Tatum, uh, <laughs> Brandon also said males suffer from suicide. Leading up to that males suffer from suicide take, he also said, he you know, you should suffer in silence as a man. Probably uh, not great in dealing with suicide. Yeah, the difference between you and us is we see it because we've right. lived it, you have not. So it's easy to speak and be like, well, it doesn't exist, but well, how would you know? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I, I think everybody has certain privileges, but what I think the question here is male what privilege. defines male privilege over women? Because women have privileges too. Right. So is there a graph that you guys it's, are calculating to make men have more than women or what? The privilege is not acknowledging what you have that comes so easy. So do you think that your fear, because you live both sides, right. do you think your fear is something that you have in your mind and you think no. it's a reality because no. No, let me say this you never you never really change as a person you're the same person mm -hmm. right that you exactly were. so you have the same physical capabilities that you did no. when you were a woman no not, no you, you no. don't my, no my strength is entirely different after well, I, I, well, what hormones. percentage would you say uh, uh, more than 100 percent okay. i weigh so, like you still 100 know, pounds but you, you now still like know, you're still not probably as strong as me but it's not about strength. It's what? Yeah, but first of all, what? So what? He's probably stronger than the rest of the... He's stronger than Gilbert. Yeah, maybe not as much as you, you gigantic idiot. But, but like, that doesn't change. Like, he's definitely stronger than Gilbert, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm strong. That or... women are targeted. Men are not targeted. I mean, maybe sometimes. I'm not saying it's never going to happen. They're targeted by other men. Most right, right. But women are targeted by, are, are by other men. I think women have me, less of a safe space. That's I disagree. What I'm men, about. men don't have a safe space. If you go to certain but I'm talking cities, about they specific... get murdered by Okay, other but I'm men. not talking about certain cities. More I'm talking so about women. everyday life. Yeah, Wait, every... what? You're saying men are targeted by men? Okay, so are women, though. I was about to say, that's a really idiotic fucking argument to make about men being violent because... It's the exact same one that is extended to black people all the time. Uh, but then I realized like he's a conservative who denies the the Tulsa massacre and says it was a race riot. So he probably thinks that too about black people. So he is a cop after all. I think that's a, that's a have you ever statement. been have you been attacked as a woman? I have. I have been <laughs> I've been raped. Yes. I've been attacked. I've been I can go on and on and on. I was homeless, living in the streets, raped all the time. It, it happens. It's a real thing. Yeah. I didn't see the guys on the street getting raped. But, you but go, men do get raped. One hundred percent. But the bro, don't act like for even a second that you give a shit about rape. Okay, you're a conservative. These guys are disgusting, bro. The only time they ever fucking use any kind of of oppression that 
that one group is facing as a consequence of like systemic uh, uh, causes. They're literally using it exclusively as a talking point. Oh, you want immigrants to come here? Well, what about the homeless people that we have living on the streets? And then if you turn around and say, what about the homeless people in the streets? And in any other conversation, they're like, actually, fuck those guys. They're lazy and they're crazy and they're transients and, you know, they should be melted into biomatter. Like, you don't give a fuck. You're just using men getting raped as a talking point here. That's it. That is the beginning and end of your interest in that subject matter. Okay? Variants of, do, of do you get cats called down the street? Like, I mean, women, women say things to me when I was but a police officer. Do you feel, officer, do you, do you you feel threatened? Them. You feel but, empowered though, right? You, no, you, I don't uh, feel empowered. I feel that that's But disgusting. do you feel scared? Do you feel threatened when a woman but cat calls you? No, I don't. But okay, I, don't feel, I don't feel threatened if a man right. tried to challenge Because you have that male privilege. Right, but as a woman, what if, no, a man, no. what if a man was whistling at you when you were walking down the street? I've had it happen to me. I had gay men whistle to me. How does that make you feel? I don't care. Okay, cool. I mean, as long as you don't touch me, we could. You're a big dude. You've never fucking felt it. You will never be able to understand it. You're a big dude. It's impossible, almost impossible to understand. Like, I've been uncomfortable until you actually legitimately, and I don't want to talk about it. I've talked about this before, but until you actually legitimately are in the presence of someone that's larger than you, that is being intimidating, you are just never going to fucking understand that, okay? You're just not. You're never going to understand it. The truth. Right. I, I know I you think, probably, yeah. you yeah. may think I'm attractive. Right. That's I fine. Think, it's cool. I get I it. I think women will say the same thing. Like, as long as you're not, like, trying to be predatory, and I've seen it because I go to clubs with my friends who are girls. I'm Max. I'm 29, and I'm a conservative man. In today's society, women and men can be whatever they want, and it can be as successful or as strong or as big of a leader as they choose. So I'm just wondering, in a, in a society that is so seemingly level, more level than ever before, why are we transitioning to different genders to, to find and what are we looking for? Biology determines gender. Trigger warning. Buck is about to do some shit here. Yup. So... Um, sex and gender, people try to argue that they're different, but sex and gender actually go hand to hand. And our biology being Wait, a man. Sex and gender go hand in hand? That's really interesting. You're sitting next to a gay man, Gilbert. Sexuality is completely fucking completely removed from gender. Completely. It's just completely removed from gender. Chromosomes. Oh, he meant he didn't um, mean Oh no, things. he didn't mean sexuality. Sorry. He meant fucking oh god. My brain is so broken. I'm sorry. He he meant uh, sex is in like what uh, Buck will consider to be biological gender. Testosterone levels, uh, bone density. Um, there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into it, and it all has to do with biology. So biology, I 100% I believe in biology. Today we don't. We talk about biology being a social construct. I disagree with that. I mean, even then he's not. Even then he's not fucking. No one says biology is a social construct. Yeah, I like. Where is that coming from? Who is biology. who's saying yeah, biology is a social construct? No one says biology is a social construct. But what does that mean? It, I, I feel like half the time, half the time, I only hear about like supposedly the left's fucking point of view exclusively from republicans this is the this is the fuck whites the fuck whitey uh take and don't give me that semantics uh that, or that pedantic fucking philosophical approach of being like biology all our all sciences technically can be whittled down to like being a social construct blah 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 like gender is a social construct biology okay is is not but even biology shows whatever you want to call it okay is still not uh, as as rigid or a binary as people think it is it's so fucking stupid not a single honest person in that field is going to be like yeah no sex is totally uh, binary it's never been binary I disagree with that as a transgender person. I was born biologically female. I always acknowledge that. And today I live as a male. Now that being said, sex and gender, they are trying to separate those things. Gender can be, I've chosen my gender. As you see, nobody would, I think, probably understand that I used to be a female. Now many people do, like you just said, believe that sex and gender are one thing and you can never change those. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm trying to show the world that this is how I feel by presenting the outside. But I think denying biology is where we get into a lot of problems. So if you want to be you know, seen as a man, then like, right on. who are you to, I, I, I don't care. I mean, you do you, whatever makes you happy. But I think like- By the way, they found the most woke fucking conservatives they can which is interesting even the fucking conservatives are like yeah i, I want to see you as, as a man i think you're a man like most conservatives be like 
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you know? Like, Ben Shapiro is the perfect example of this, where, like, he will literally Finally accidentally correctly gender a trans person and now. then stop themselves to misgender the trans person. You know what I mean? Like, like we get... It, it becomes a slippery slope. It's like, how are we going to deny basic human facts? Like... There's two I genders. think that causes problems, and it causes problems for me. Yeah. Because the minute I start denying your biology, now you feel attacked by me. Right. And I don't want you to feel attacked by me. I never want you to feel, I want to be a part of, if that makes sense. You don't have to agree with my choice of how I live my life, but all I ask for is respect. What do you have on your driver license and your birth certificate? Right, did you great, change it to male or did you change it to? So, so that being said, I transitioned to live as a man 29 years ago. So that was way before you see any of this stuff. And I had to acknowledge my biology, right? That being said, my license, I travel the world. It has to say male. Can you imagine if I showed up at the, at the, the airport and they're like, female? <laughs> Dude, there's something going on here. But I actually got my, my birth certificate changed to male. I was the first person to do that here in Los Angeles. But that being said, I kind of think that it might have been a mistake to do that now, looking forward today. Oh my I God, never... dude. Literally just so, so brain broken, dude. So fucked up. Oh yeah, no, I... I did that and then I realized like, you know, I realized it's not a privilege that should be given to anyone else. <laughs> I, 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 I thought we would be having this conversation. I'm glad you said that because I love that people can express themselves. We live in America. It doesn't matter what I believe, what my religion is. I, I love that people can live their best life. I would never ever in my life protest or, or try to go against a person who wants to identify. The problem is, it's when you begin to try to change language and you begin to try to change reality. And then, then therefore it changes on the children and all of that becomes problematic. If a person says, okay, I acknowledge I'm born as a man or a woman, but I want to identify as this. Cool. I respect that. And even if I didn't, want to see it that way and some people may be a little more ambiguous i wouldn't never disrespect you i'll call you by your name that's right whatever name that you want to be associated with i'll, I'll do that and i and i think if everybody in the country can get on that same page i think we'll see less division i've noticed in a lot of the trans individuals that i've met the older generation who had it a lot harder in society to be accepted is a lot more willing to have the conversation. We didn't have social media. I didn't have cell phones. I didn't have computers when I transitioned. This is how you build bridges. I'm Buck, I'm 59 years old, and I'm a trans man. Because I'm an elder trans man now, and there's a much newer generation, there's a definite space where I have a different way of being than the younger generation, and why I tend to call myself a transsexual man. And I believe in biology, I believe in binary, so it really does not necessarily align with the new thought process that is happening with the newer generation. So I love this question. I didn't pre-watch, um, I just know his uh, POV. Biology does change. Our bone density does change. Our muscle structure does change. Our testosterone levels do change. So biologically, we do change. Anatomically, now that's where surgeries come into play. So when, when we're talking about biology and gender that, that can't be changed, our biology absolutely and concretely changes. Not the there. DNA. But our, our DNA bio... DNA does not change. Yeah, right. DNA is not going to change okay. for anyone. So you acknowledge there's a biological difference between females and females because some people on the other side would say there's no difference, like a female, like I can look like a girl, not have any testosterone, but I'm still a male. Some people are male, some people are, are, are female, chromosomally. But when we start to take testosterone, our bodies do biologically change. Right. But what about okay. trans men who don't take testosterone? Then their bodies don't biologically change. That means then they're change. biologically still female, right? Well, then, it, and gender in itself is something we get to choose. Okay, That's right. just like you said. Well, in your, right? in your life, you get to choose. Not, you right. don't get to choose it for the world, but you get no, to choose you, it for the No, I get to That's choose right. my gender because I've been on testosterone for 10 years. What do you mean in your life, but you don't get to choose it for everyone else? Like, you would never do that for someone's name. You know what I mean? You would never be like, sorry, your name is not Brandon, actually. I don't agree. I'm going to call you Bella. You're like, no, I'm... I, I, <laughs> like, wh you never do that. <laughs> That's so insane. Like, why? 10 years. Okay, going on 11 years. But there's some, uh, some anatomy that will never change. That's right. Right? right? I mean, you're you're gonna, you, 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 you still have ovaries. You still have, yes. you know, the female reproductive system. You yes. said that you had a child. Yes, I, I've given birth. I no longer have female reproductive organs. Right, right, but you, you had that. You will never get 
male productive organs. Now, when you think about it, the male and female productive organs are similar and they're nearly the same. They're different. Right. They're different in size. Even if okay, you know, biologically, and they're, they're different, different in functionality in, too. Not know. necessarily, well, because you know, the testes and the ovaries are, are very much similar. One is a one is a uh, an egg. One is a fertilizer, but and that's the difference. I love people saying, oh, that's crazy that he's saying that. He's right. Have you never seen like what they look like even on a fucking photo or something like in an educational sex ed class? He's just right. He's 100 percent right. But I can but I but I never can produce. Sperm, You're absolutely ever, right. Ever. You're absolutely right. And, and he, they can never produce ova. And you guys are saying that gender is like a social construct. Is that what you're saying, too, that you could change it? But also, if you want to be technical about it, age is a social construct. Your ethnicity and race is a social construct. And I'm Hispanic. No, it, but like you can't change the fucking time. You can change how you perceive someone's age. Someone can look younger, but it's not a fucking social construct because it is an established like passage of time. It's a matter of how much time, no matter how much your libertarian ass wants to fuck 16 year olds or whatever, it's still a matter of how much time has passed on the planet. And the way we experience that is no matter how we feel about it, exactly the same. I can't say I'm Chinese because I like Chinese food. I, I, could, I could bleach my no. skin all I want. I could so wear Chinese that's, clothes. No, race is not. How, how is ethnicity going to be a construct? Yeah. There's all a social construct. So how, how, how if, you look exactly? up, if you look up, is race a social construct? Ethnicity a social construct? Is time a social construct? Right. Everything's a social construct if you want to think about it that way. But we have set truths and we can't change those I truths. Hate if you want to say you're a trans man, that means you're a biological female that thinks that no, you're a male. No, I, I am a biological male. I'm an anatomically. See, anatomically, he's have different I'm version still of it than, right. And I think it's so, really important that right. you understand and, and, we're all and, and have it's different anatomic, views. okay? Yeah. Because biologically, I have shifted, okay? Trans meaning going from one to the next. <laughs> I love it. And all these things. I know that there's importance for you guys, but <laughs> he's dope, dude. They they cut him off. He's like, I have shifted. <laughs> anatomically. Uh, he's he's my favorite out of uh, the the trans okay, men. But meeting me or seeing me, you would never know. So why is it important? Well, no, because like, no, 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 like, just, say, I'm just, just say if I was a woman, just say if I was a woman and I wanted to date you, what are you gonna tell me? I would tell you that I'm trans. What do you yeah, mean? No, no, I'm saying you can't tell me that you're a man. I mean, I'm still a man. No, no, but, but you I'm gotta tell me, man. you gotta tell me that you were born a woman. You have. I to. mean, I don't. Have to. Well, because if I if I go down, if I, if I if I if I see right. you in your pants, right. I'm gonna see something different and that's that. Okay, dude, that's like, that's a little gay, okay? Sorry, 14 you're being a little gay like right now. The brain Not that there's anything wrong with it. You're, you're a little too concerned with what's going on with this dude's pants, okay? And fantasizing about it a little too much. That's the funniest part about conservatives is that they literally are just like, I need to know what's inside of your pants. What the fuck? What's it to you? You, you can't do that. That's like literally illegal in most situations. That will be troubling to me right, if but, I had an expectation. But again, this is like leading off the topic, but I mean, to answer your question, if you must know, I do tell the person that I'm talking to or interested that I'm transgender. I don't think that you need it to, you know, you don't need a penis to be a man. I know that you may disagree, which is fine. Like, I get it, but I don't want one. I think now, I have a question for you, all of you. Do your penises make you men? Yes, well, it's part of our, like, it's part of what makes is, man, is yes. that what makes well, you? Well, I said yeah. being a man's ingrained within every part of your body, so our cells, our, right. our but, penis too. But, but if, if you, if you had like, that, he's about to trap them so hard, like so incredibly hard, because they're gonna have to say yes, and then he's gonna return and he's gonna turn around and be like, okay, does that mean that like a fucking veteran who's had their fucking dick shot off is that no longer a man? Like straight up. Boom. Are you are you going to go tell the, the, the veteran that he's no longer a man because he got his dick shot off? Straight up bait, dude. Straight up. Would you ever turn around and behave like that? When someone has, when someone has erectile dysfunction, does that mean they're no longer a man? There are intersex people that you would never ever in a million years like consider to be not a man. That if you had to look at the difference between us and between you, now would that difference be the lack of a penis? If you if we were naked. Okay, I mean, it, so it if we're be, gonna if we're gonna minimize Okay, dude, come on, dude. He's literally like if we were what if we were naked? Just think about that. I mean it'd be kind of cool, right? Like it'd be crazy. Like what if we were naked right now? That's sus. That's sus, dude. I mean real sussy. <laughs> Brandon Ten let's go. Brandon comes out as a chaser after the <laughs> After this video comes out, is being a man to that particular anatomy. We, we I've didn't, got. We didn't minimize. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question. 
okay? If we minimize it, because this is where we're going, is anatomy, right? Because that's, that's where we've gotten. Our basic biology, okay? yeah. So if we get there, so do your penises make you more men than us? It's, it, part of it's what not does. making more or less. It's we're a, we're a biologically man. Mm -hmm. You're not a biological man. It's not a spectrum, it's so it's not it's not a question that we can answer because you're saying on the spectrum would this make us more of a man than you? But no, it's because we are a man and you guys aren't. Well, we're different. So men. so we're not men. We're is, is what you is exactly what you just in, said. In my view, you guys oh, are a, go, appropriating the gender and you are living as a man. But biologically, you are not a man. Dude, I'm s the fucking conservatives using like liberal academic language is so whack, by the way. I can't be the only one who thinks that, right? I, I hate it when liberals use it, obviously, because it's annoying. But I definitely fucking despise it when I hear uh, dumbass conservatives be like, uh, you're appropriating the gender of a man. So to me, it's not, you can't say, okay, well, what make, does that make us more of a man? That's not even a question to ask because you're not a biological man. When it comes down to asking questions that make me start to change what the truth is and what the truth isn't, putting it on a spectrum when it's an objective truth, that's where I draw the line. What's the biggest problem with what he said? It doesn't make, you, it doesn't make what you feel any different. The biological truth is the truth, and why can't that be the truth? And you also say, but I feel like on the inside that I'm a man and I'm gonna present that way. The argument is that people try to invalidate who we are with that. I'm not saying that you guys are doing that, but a lot of society- No, the they world... are doing that. They're definitely doing that. They're just doing that as like gently as they can. You, unfortunately, in a conversation while they're discussing your existence, okay, care about the fucking, you know, hurt fifis of the dumbass his people that are conservative. It's wild. These these guys on the one side literally are just like, you're not men. You know what I mean? You look, feel, act. You're a man in every way, shape, or form, except for the fact that I don't think you are, okay? And even in that situation, the trans dude ha still has to be like, you know, I'm not saying you guys are invalidating our experiences or, or in our existences. It's like, they are. They literally are. So just remember, when you... This is, a, this is an opportunity for cis people uh, to, to comprehend this a little bit better. This is why a lot of trans people are fucking angry all the time, okay? This is why. Because they, they literally have to walk on fucking eggshells. Even when, uh, even when they're, they're talking to people who are very clearly not just disrespectful, but like, like invalidating. What hurts trans people that people don't realize what they're doing is it's very harmful. You got to be aware of what you're saying and what you're putting out there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I would, and that's why I think we all agree. We would never try to offend you or anything like that. To be honest, if I saw any one of you in the streets, I, I, yeah, I don't care. It, it's not gonna bother me that you wanna, right. I would know unless I pulled your pants down or something. Right. Wow. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. I can't, I can't with Brandon, dude. Yo, this is like, oh my God, uh, he can't stop, dude. He can't stop. He constantly, he's just like, dude, what's up with the fucking pull your pants down shit, dude? It's weird. Do you feel like you have to present the way you do? You know, facial uh, hair. Could you, could you right. be a man without having facial hair? I mean, yeah. Because I, you feel like you're a man. Um, I'm in the early stages of testosterone. I haven't hit one year yet. But personally for me, you know, I crave, you know, having a full on beard right like, like these fine gentlemen and you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> like, I crave it, you know, like. <laughs> But um, I do believe, like, it, not having... Dude, I just... There's nothing more cop energy than constantly being like, hey, we should do this. We should call this penis inspection day. Actually, hey, uh, can you drop your trousers, please? Like, it's penis inspection time. Incredible cop energy. He's like, he wants to, he wants to regulate and police your genitals, okay? Like, this little small peach rose I have going on, it does make me feel more dysphoric. It makes me, like, feel like, oh... That's just how, this is how I presented before transitioning. Do you feel like it's something that has gone wrong? Brandon be like, stop and frisk, but I won't stop once I start frisking. Like, you um, know, you're born and you say, well, genetics and evolution says right. this. Blood Why blood do blood I feel like this? Yeah, I mean, I, have I think this. questioning it was something that I always wondered because sometimes when people say like, oh, like it was a choice, which I hear a lot on the other side all the time. Like it was a choice. I was legit born this way. Like I could remember from I think four or five years old where like I didn't feel like a girl you know what I mean and I I can't tell you why that happened it was just my path yeah. in this life and it's something that I honored and you know it was really hard for me to continue living especially when puberty hit mm -hmm. you know like time of month comes in obviously anatomy changes like and that was the biggest thing for me where I knew that like okay I can't do this it's like you're not 
in your own home. One side, I am lucky, I'm 41, and I'm a trans man. One of my greatest fears as a trans man is my life being taken from me because I'm a trans man. Transitioning in a black neighborhood with gang members as neighbors, uh, they weren't having that. So the more that, that my body started to look a lot like theirs, um, I was challenged on a regular basis. I was beaten up because someone recognized me from prior to my transition and approached me and confronted me and called me a liar and told me I was a bitch. And I, out of safety, was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they cold cocked me and I lost the front tooth. I grew up with a positive father figure. This is good. <laughs> I think, I think, it, I think for me is, it's surprising because I would believe that a woman who, or a person who's born as a woman who now identifies as a man didn't have a positive role model as a man and therefore they felt somewhat insecure as a woman, which makes them, you know. Dude, he, he can't stop it. He can't stop. He literally cannot stop. It's awesome. No one has told Brandon that he's like, he's crazy. Stop, you know, you, you shouldn't. He thinks he's spitting right now. That's the funniest part. He's like, wow. I would have thought that all all trans people came from bad, broken down homes. Like, that's wild. <laughs> I don't feel a certain way. I want to be a certain different person. Maybe they want to be the man that their father never was or whatever the case may be. And so it was very interesting. I, I mean, I'm being honest. It was interesting to see pretty much a majority of, of you guys uh, come forth. That's so great. I think that's really important that you say that because I do think a lot of people probably feel that way about guys like me, right? That our fathers are, we didn't have the right upbringing or what. My father was amazing. I grew up really like a little boy. I always felt like a little boy. My parents actually raised me and I'm 59 years old. Well, I don't know. Maybe gender affirmation early on, not so good. Didn't come out like Buck. <laughs> I've realized perhaps not a good thing, okay? Never mind. <laughs> I'm obviously joking, okay? Everybody chill. Old. So that was in the 60s and the 70s when we didn't even talk about this kind of stuff. But my parents actually felt it from me. So I think that that's a misconception that people. That's think wild that he had supportive parents in the 60s and 70s. And now, like, if he had a trans Remember kid, like, he wouldn't be watch. as supportive as in comparison to the time period. Like, it's crazy that he is not going to offer the same amenities that are now available, uh, uh, respectively to the time period that he lived in. You can't say that, dude. What do you mean? It's it's true. Allowing your child to fucking, allowing your child to, to, to you know, identify as a different gender than they were uh, assigned to at birth in the 60s and 70s is incredibly, incredibly rare. So that is like a unique kind of privilege that you get, even though you're still obviously trans, so you still obviously are getting fucked over regardless but like in comparison to other trans people like you got this incredible privilege at a time when when the the material conditions or like the base reality for uh what you can do for your trans children has completely evolved to a different level buck's like yeah no that's unacceptable <laughs> it's kind of sad that he would be less open-minded than his parents were to him and he's a trans man think about people like us any good father pushes their child to one be you know feel self-love and to feel like they can be who they want do what they want and you know have life of liberty and the pursuit of happiness right like our, like our founding fathers and um so you know it's fatherlessness or you know having a, a missing dad is one a pandemic on its own and, and it's one that obviously i'm sure brandon can attest to it's 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 so critical to have a father in the house because kids get lost when they don't have one and having a, a father that's loving and strong and and uh, someone you can rely on is you know, the reason why, you know, we're all comfortable with who we are. Um, I had several different father figures, like, in my life. So it wasn't, you know, I had a dad, but then I had my grandfather and I had my uncle. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, right? But all of those different perspectives raised me as a, as a well-rounded human. Protect trans like, children. you know, if we take the masculinity out of it, um, just as a human, I got to see different perspectives. And so now as a father that has given birth to a child and that child being a male, right, I'm able to raise him with those same ideals that that I'm able to, to identify because of the father figures that I had. I didn't have my father growing up. Um, he was not. Why did he say, why did he look at Brandon when he said you would understand it better than anybody else? That was weird. Was that like some racist shit? Like, I don't know what that was about. Or is it because he's a dad? Maybe. Is he a dad? I mean, he is a dad. We know he's a hypothetical father of a gay kid that he would abuse, but like. <laughs> 
present in my life at all. So it showed me that some men can step up, like my grandfather and my stepfather who have taken me in and showed me how to take care of myself, how to be, you know, strong and dependable. And all I've been able to do is give more love to all people that I interact with. Right. So it was really important for me to have those I, figures. I think this is a, a really important thing to show people that are watching this because a lot of times I feel like we can blame any issues in society or anything that arises on the generation that came before us. So any issues that arise in our society, it's like it, there's not always a reason why it's happening. We just need to address the issue and solve it. I grew up with a lot of women. Um, my parents were divorced and I lived with my mom. I had my aunts. So I was raised by women, but um, my dad was there sometimes and then my stepdad took me in as his own, so I had my stepdad as a father figure. I grew up with all women as well. My mom used to tell me, I have to be your mom and your dad. So like, there'd be times where I got both. Like she was super sweet with me or really strict on me. And like, she taught me a lot as well. Like growing up with women, it taught me a lot of vulnerability. And when you were talking to you, I was like, I relate to you very well. <laughs> bro, I'm the father that stepped up for Gilbert, bro. Okay, it's time to admit it. Sorry, I had to admit it. Yes, I failed. He's a conservative mouthpiece now. But to be fair, it was the biological dad's determination to fucking name him Gilbert that cut him from the start. You know what I mean? It's kind of, who's, whose fault is it at that point? You know what I mean? There's only so much social conditioning. Listen, you name your son Gilbert, he's going to come out a Gilbert. I don't even feel bad about making this joke because, like, I don't think there's any Gilberts in the chat. You know what I mean? I, I, and I love you. I'm obviously joking, okay? I mean, if there is one, you've overcome. The fact that you're in this chat means you've overcome your destiny. You know what I mean? And that's that's brilliant. You know, I've been living as a Gilbert for 24 years and I'm not a gigantic dweeb. Ask me anything, you know? But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm Jacob. I'm 27 years old and I'm a trans man. So the relation with my dad and how unsupportive he is has been a challenge for me, but it's something that I've learned to grow past. And I encourage everyone that even if you don't have a parent who is supportive to still be authentically yourself because your life is meant to be lived for you. And I think that choosing my happiness above all else has made my life that much better and I wouldn't change anything. Even though he wasn't supportive, I still wouldn't have him here. Listening to all your guys' points, I would definitely say, yeah, I did have a father figure. He was in the Marines and he has this very like toxic masculinity mindset, a lot of anger built up that I can definitely tell he suppressed, you know, in the Marines because that's what he was taught to do. That's what the Marines are about. He always carried that with him. And I think that's what he tried to instill in me and my siblings at a very young age, which made it hard for me to be vulnerable with myself. And I just saw a lot of anger issues that were, you know, very violent sometimes. And since coming out um, as trans, Your points I feel like he's been more willing to understand me more goal. and trying to figure out who I am as a person. And because of that, I feel like our relationship has definitely got a lot stronger since then. Okay, I imagine how difficult it was to come home and then try to be vulnerable after suppressing so much pain and hurt for years. So it's good to hear that. Conservatives be yeah. like, man, it's got to be real tough being a Marine after suppressing so much pain and hurt and then continue justifying American imperialism to its maximum degree that continues to literally churn out the next generation of crayon eaters that are also fucked up. Ridiculous. You know, he's l learning and kind of evolving yeah, exactly. and opening up. That's something where, you know, you guys were talking about vulnerability, right? And it's like, there's, it's, there's times when it's good to be hard. I don't show emotion as much as I'd like. I definitely have sensed um, and noticed since transitioning that being on testosterone has made me cry less, which is very interesting because I believe that before I transitioned and started taking testosterone, I feel like not being able to cry as much, it makes me feel like I'm like- He's Damn. about to be like, I was on the ground crying all the time. <laughs> I was constantly on the ground, laying on the ground crying, like Brandon said. Um, I wish I could cry right now, but it's not gonna happen. Hi, I'm Gibby and I'm a trans man. Before transitioning, I, I guess, only presented as lesbian. But since transitioning, I've been able to be more comfortable with my sexuality. Um, I've definitely seen on like dating apps and stuff, a lot of conservative men fetishizing trans individuals. And it's interesting because a lot of the time they say that yeah, like they Brandon. don't identify as um, gay or, you know, within the community and yet they're fetishizing um, my community.
Yeah, he already, he's calling out Brandon, boys. That's what's going so on. I don't know about you guys, but I always speak my mind. If I feel a certain way, I'll tell somebody, and that probably cost me a lot of relationships, but uh, that's just how I am. <laughs> so I don't think there's anything wrong. With, I know we talked about vulnerability you know, a long time ago. I don't think there's anything wrong with being vulnerable. I think, like we said, there's times and places for it. Knowing when it's okay to be vulnerable and being self-aware of that, and then you know, being strong when you need to and, and being um, sad you know, when it's appropriate. But I, I certainly am not as vulnerable or not as emotional as probably I should because just because it's not something that I always did growing up. But I, I don't feel like I have any real issues like suppressing. I just feel like I kind of right. get it out in other ways. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great you look at, it, look at it like that because I believe for me, like my personal experiences, like because I was one, you know, to transition at a very young age and my dad being in, in the military, um, being a veteran, he would see me being vulnerable at times and he'd be like, well, don't you want to be a man? And that would make me feel like, oh, am I not supposed to be vulnerable anymore? Now that I'm, like, you know, I'm going to transition. And it was just like very hard for me because uh, like I said earlier, it was hard for me to have that father figure at that time of my life. Uh, you know, my process. He was like, at least he's not like transphobic, but he's still like being a bad parent by educating um, his child in in the bad ways, like by teaching them to be toxically masculine. So strange. Here, let me teach you how to be a man, boy. <laughs> you need to be sexist as fuck. Clarkson is not in the closet. He is out of the closet. He is a gay man. Why do, why do people say he is in the closet? Of, you know, digesting emotions is by myself and I use that time to self-reflect. So if I'm feeling angry or if I'm, you know, feeling really passionate about something or whatever the emotion is, sometimes I pull back and I don't show that emotion because I'm reflecting on it and trying to understand why it's there. So I think a lot of times people can think men aren't showing enough emotion, but in reality, they're just self-assessing why that emotion is there in order to see what it's, what it's trying to teach us. Lambert. Right, I, th I think for, for my, when I was female, I was much more angry. I was just reactive, angry, like Grr. And then as I became a man, I so, I cry more now as a man than I ever did as a woman. And I'm like, I think it's because I'm at peace with myself. And so before I was just so angry about being a woman and everyone calling me she and seeing a girl and I'd just be, and I was a fashion model. So that really just took it to a whole other level. And then once I I became a man it was like whoa I can actually relax and I think I do the same thing I self-reflect on myself I don't I want to be this type of man that is more vulnerable and that is more uh, accessing my own emotions thank you everyone right on thank you that was cool that was yeah. cool thank you it was low-key not as I mean it, it had like really bad moments but conservatives have the capability of being way way more transphobic than these guys were okay it was still pretty bad but like holy shit that like first of all there was not a single conservative that was like across the board i don't think you're a man and that also has something to do with the relative marginal but relative marginal privilege that like trans men have over trans women i think especially when trans women are talking to cis men and, and this is something that the trans men there would also admit it's just male privilege cis men talking to trans men is different than cis men talking to trans women where they just straight up will be like no fuck no absolutely not so it's uh it's it was interesting to see regardless though because like the crop of conservative dudes they found weren't as insane as what you would normally assume is going to be the case